about. Uh, welcome to Zofner. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'll start to make you a question uh, about, well, I, if we see your professional careers mm. since the 80s mainly, mm. Mm. your work, it's, it's uh, I think, exclusively on doc documentary. I mean, mm. you did not uh, made incursions in fiction. Why you find documentary that it seems to be more interesting than fiction for you? Well, as so many things in life, the choice of documentary wasn't a real choice. It was more f a facility. I am. Um, I discovered at the film school that I would have been a very bad assistant for a feature film. If you would ask me to get me four coffees and a tea, I will come back with something different. So I felt very uncomfortable to in the structure of feature film. It's more a negative choice in a way. I don't like very much the studios and I don't like the structure of feature film with a with a kind of a pyramid uh, kind of uh, circle, nearly military. Uh, yeah, military. I, I like to be on my own and uh, not having to do something for someone else. So I have never been an assistant and I always started on my own. I started with educational film. Uh, I still think that's one of the most challenging uh, forms of audiovisual expression. Um, I did some video artwork and then, then I, I found out that I wanted to learn to applicate fully the audiovisual language. And documentary is for me the best way to, to do it because you, you are exposed not as a video art, it's in a museum you walk around. Um, documentary, it's, it's like music, it's, it's running in time. So you have a beginning, a middle, an end. You have all the, you have all the elements like the framing, like the light, all the parameters of cinema you can practice in that. While in feature, you probably have to make much more compromises towards the story. And, uh, and that's maybe the reason I did documentary, to, to be independent, to be free. And then there is another element which I'm, I always found uh, related to cinema uh, and something that I don't find back in feature film, or not, not, not anymore, is the notion of adventure. Adventure is something that's disappearing. If you see people around you, they, they, uh, they talk about feature film if they are, uh, I don't know, if they are uh, uh, doing something, uh, s painting a house, or it's just become something very ordinary, very industrial. And I like to make cinema outside of the industry, outside of, away from the producer and far away and that is I think is documentary is a very very nice way of expression to to do so anyway besides that what you find so passioning in reality subjects in reality subjects I am fascinated by the perception of reality you you have two persons they do the same road they meet the same people they go to the same cinema or same, uh, read the same books, and they all have a different perception of the same reality. So I am very much interested in the uh, psychological um, way the reality goes through our eyes and brains and transform in something else. And I want to make cinema that looks like that. So what I do in reality is very far away from recording. Recording is for me a very bad word. It means that you have no, that you have, you, that, that you don't put any any uh, risk in what you're making. You're just recording something like like we do here now. I think um, uh, for me, it's what I find interesting is coloring, coloring the reality, uh, uh, framing it, make it different, make it really like uh, like close to the perception, and. The perception is totally different than the reality. 
the perception in mind that, for instance, when I'm talking now, that you, you, you might be thinking of completely something else, something that is not very useful. Uh, maybe uh, you think about your weekend, what you're going to buy for your barbecue. Well, you're doing the interview, so the voice, the volume ma meter is recording my voice. But what you see is maybe only like that. And that is what I think is interesting for reality, the perception. That changes for everyone. Yes, I mean, the it's same different for every. Changes for Exa exactly. But 99%, 99 of the films, the horizon is right. But every day we, we put our head once like this, we sleep like this, and, and still we keep in our representation of reality the horizon right. That means that we are all very conventional, that we are all trying to do, to show that we can do as everybody does. And that's what I'm trying to um, find out, how we can fight against that, not only as a director, also as a teacher. You are a teacher, as you said. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just now. Yeah. Um, you think your work as teacher, that comes from at least 20 years, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, somehow helped, helped you to master your craft, so to speak. Yes. As a docu documentarist. Of yes. First of all, the choice of teaching was a very constant choice. I, I did made it already when I was 30, because in my profession, um, you're very dependent. And uh, you're dependent on film commission or on, on clients or on the market. And I saw many people around me of my age now who were behaving like chameleons, adapting all the time. Now, it's no problem if you're 20, if you're 50, it's, very, it's not very comfortable uh, and it, it's not good for your health. So I, I, I always wanted to find a profession on the side that uh, gave me a guarantee of a small income. So that's why I got my independence. Sometimes we say, uh, and especially in the film I'm making now, that the biggest producers of my films are the schools. Uh, so it's very strange. Now, the question if there is a relation between teaching and directing, I think yes, because I am uh, constantly thinking, how can I explain this? Which is a good exercise, in fact. I never let myself go and just say, whoa, this is funny, I filmed that or I filmed that. I always think, what, what's the use of it? How would I be able to explain this? Uh, is it logical? The other thing I like to do, even with my crew, is when they're filming, I'm saying, uh, this is my first image, this is my second, this is will be my end shot. I'm trying to already edit on the spot. And these are all elements that come from education, in a way. And then I show sometimes the films, like yesterday, uh, I showed it here in classes, and then one of the students said, well, I think your sequence, what you showed, of, uh, had a false ending. So it was a, it was a, a first editing. So uh, that's something that can be very useful. I, I, next tomorrow, I'm already starting to re-look at that. And uh, so, so there is a relation for me between um, filming and, um, and 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 education. Uh, the last reason maybe is that we are all getting older. And when you get older, it's, it's always the fear of repeating and, 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 and protecting yourself. And in our surroundings with young people, you, you, are, you keep yourself more sharp. Yes. Uh, documentary, for definition, is um, uh, shooting something that uh, happens sometimes uh, unpredictably. Yeah. So, uh, how you manage to predict the uh, unpredictable? Well, there is many. Um, you 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 have to. You cannot work with a one plan in documentary because your one plan will never work out. Uh, I'll give you an example. You have a plan with a meeting with Mr. A on Tuesday, and Mr. A happens to be ill 
or his uh, or his boss told him to come to work. So there you stand with your crew, waiting for Mr. A. He's not coming. So you must have, and that's in this example, have a plan B. Uh, a plan B means that if this will not work, what will what can we do then? You must, in fact, start with the idea that your plan A doesn't work. So you always have a backup plan. That's the first thing. Now, how can you predict the unpredictable? Many people think that things just happen. I give you an example. Suppose you have a, a, a demonstration here in Lisbon um, against the government. How can you predict? Well, I mean, there's been demonstrations for years and years. They always take the same roads. There is always police and there is people that are shouting. And it always happens somewhere, somewhere not in the beginning, because the officials somewhere too third. So you can't say, what's interesting for me? Am I looking at from the position of the, of the a police officer, of an official, of a, someone who is looking to the manifestation? I have to take a position. But you can r quite well schedule things. Um, the problem is we focus too much on events. For instance, you make a film of a couple and you film them the last two months before the marriage. Everybody who is making a film like that is focusing on how to film the marriage with three cameras and how we have to have the ring and so on. I forget the marriage because that we know. We know what is a marriage. So I filmed the two months before and in the end I say they got married six weeks uh, after it. Just a sentence. So some things are predictable and others you better not touch because we know them and they are better made by other people. Never film a football match. It's no use. It's, it's, it's already been done many times and they do it much better. But film the, uh, the, the keeper, the gardien du but. Ke film him only, his, his figure. That's nobody does. So if you focus on a small detail in an, in an unpredictable reality, then, you, then it makes sense. Anyway, uh, some people think that the documentary don't need to be planned because uh, it will be a process, uh, a sort of ongoing process, mm -hmm. uh, ad a constant adapting to what is happening in, in yeah. real. Yeah. So what is your method? You plan carefully uh, your films or you just go no, no, no. I along? I plan, uh, I try to, uh, sometimes I start with the end. Uh, some films I start with the music. Already discussed about the music and then I film. Um, I don't believe much in words like uh, spontaneous things or intuition or, or, or let's say feeling things. Uh, these are for me new age concepts a little bit for, uh, for these magazines like Cosmopolitan or for... Uh, um, I think uh, a lot of things can be planned. And if I cannot plan all the shots, I at least plan my key shots, my most important shot. Because for me, what is important is that you see through the film who made it. Uh, that the film has a, what we call a signature, a way of telling, a way of uh, storytelling. If you let yourself go, you just film like you feel. There is no, there is no signature. If I give five students a camera and I, I let them all film a tennis match, it's very good. They let them, they're all very spontaneous filming, but they're all filming spontaneously in the same way. So what's spontaneous? It's very me me mechanical. In fact, we all let ourselves go. If I hear boom, I, I go and look there. Where's the boom? Probably I be too late. So I give the example, for instance, if I film you, you're my character, and now there is a car accident. If I'm reacting by intuition, I, I quickly go and look the car accident. I miss it because it's already happened. 
I go back to you and I miss your reaction. So I better say to my cameraman, don't let yourself go. Keep on his face whatever happens. Because your reaction on the car accident is much more interesting than the car accident. So that means that I need a method and I need a kind of a, a, a rigueur, a way of uh, constantly following a line rather than letting myself go like a leaf in the wind. Yes. Uh, when we see your films, we, we find a very distinctive and personal approach. Um, I'd like to make you a difficult question, a tough question. Go ahead. Uh, where you get inspiration for these projects? Ah, it depends, it depends. It can be curiosity. There is no real line in the films. They are all, they are all not very close to a house, so I, I go, uh, I film quite far away. And most of the success subjects are not very um, evident. Um, I, I very often use the word sexy. They are not very sexy. Um, sexy subjects for me are subjects for producers. Um, that means that the subjects are hot subjects. The problem with hot subjects, sexy subjects, is that we already have an image of those, of those subjects. Now that's good for everybody, you know what film to make, but it's not good at the same time because the film has already been made before it's made. So I like to focus on subjects that don't create an immediate image. So I like to, uh, I, I, uh, one of my first films I made was about mathematics. Now mathematics is the worst thing to, to because we have no image for that. But that makes me, gives me a lot of freedom to, to do something with it. Um, so the inspiration can come from small things. Um, the next film I make, make is, a, is, a, is about a writer, a Dutch writer who, who lived in Japan and China in America and he made detective stories and I, I read his biography and I was fascinating not so much by his work but more by his, in, his independence and his uh, stra the stra strange figure he is. He died 40 years ago so I am challenged by the, the fact to make a biography film of somebody who died 40 years ago in a world that completely changed without using archives. So I always like to, to have a challenge in the film. That's, that's, that's the choice of my, my subjects. One last question. Yes. <laughs> uh, you are in Portugal now, yes. but it's not your first time. No. More than that, oh we yeah. have some connections to Portugal that yes. come from deep in the past. I yes, yes, yes. Can you tell us a bit about your vision, about ourselves? Yeah, mi esposa é portuguesa. So uh, I, I even speak a little bit, but you follow como uma criança. I speak a little bit. I, I, I have a difficulty to speak here because people are always laughing. If I go to Brazil, it's much more easier for me because they, they, they accept more the, the errors. But uh, you ask me about the image of the, the Portuguese, ourselves seen by a foreigner yes. or an alien if I can be more provocative. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult because we are not in the zoo. But um, uh, I've come here for 20 years. I've seen the country changing. Uh, one of the elements that has changed in the 20 years that this, this discussion we have now would have been in French 20 years ago. Uh, so Portugal made a, 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 a tremendous jump uh, as being uh, one of the l one of the later members of the European Union, now uh, the, the country developed. Uh, the motorways are bigger than than, than in Belgium, uh, so they, they things went quicker here. On the other hand, uh, on the other hand, there is a a soul, a Portuguese soul, which is not always easy to understand, and. Um, which is not always easy to work with. Uh, I, 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 
started a film. I tried to make a film here uh, over ten years ago, and I completely, uh, with my Dutch background, I completely misunderstood uh, the difference between politeness and, um, um, let's say, um, uh, politeness and and having having a real thing in hand. Many people said to me, yes, it's going to happen, and yes, we find it. And it was just a form of politeness. But concretely, nothing happened. Uh, that's something you have to deal with, you have to learn. So you have to decode a little bit. Um, there is a form of, um, of culture, of daily life, uh, making life pleasant. Um, in my father-in-law, he he really takes care of me. Gives me something to drink. He, he, he says it's a, there is a kind of a culture of life, politeness. Something uh, it looks something sometimes a little bit of the 19th century. Uh, very nice, very pleasant. At the same time, there is sometimes a feeling of fatalism, which I find here, uh, saying that uh, things have always been like that and they will ne they will always stay like that. So. Uh, it, it can go by both ways, but these are nearly touristical um, visions. I mean, uh, if you if you deal with young people here, uh, it's very similar. I mean, uh, so steals our trademark is fatalism. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is. I I, um, I, uh, I I made one film in Portugal with the uh, music group Madre Deus and. Um, the singer um, and the founder of the group, he, uh, Pedro Arias Magalhães, tried to explain to me uh, this this concept of saudade. It's very very difficult to. The, the only country I really there's two countries I I, I see that also. That is uh, Russia. There is a kind of a saudade, a kind of a nostalgia, and then they say sometimes. Um, Portugal is like is Ireland without rain, and I think that is a very good definition. It's it's uh, it's it's these are the three countries in Europe that have a soul, uh, I would say. Okay, now the final one. The final <laughs> one, yeah. Just a glimpse about the master classes you uh, are doing here. Yeah. Uh, you can speak uh, a bit about the structure and the method you, you will use to the master classes. Just yeah. to as introduction. Yes, I uh, the 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 it's got two uh, elements in it: how to um, how to write for documentary and how to direct documentary. How to write is related to the fact that you need to write nowadays if you want to find money, uh, an idea doesn't mean anything, it's not protected. Uh, an idea is something you can use in a bar when you something saying is uh, you have any ideas for next project, yes I have an idea. But then you can also lose that idea because it's not, as I told you, it's not protected. Um, you have to write in this society for legal reasons, for financial reasons. So and you have to survive as an artist. So you must develop a way of writing. Uh, the writing is the central element of, of this profession. The, there's a big difference between having an idea and writing the idea. There's not a tremendous difference between writing and directing. That goes easy. But the first step to, to go to this writing process is, is important. So in the courses I explain um, a way of writing a method of writing, my own method. And then we are talking a lot about directing reality. It means that how far can you go in directing? How far can you manipulate? Or, um, or, or what is the, the limit between uh, fiction and documentary? Um, these are the things I'm very interested in. And the question that comes very often back is whether my way of filming is not very fake. 
uh, in a way that uh, it's not reality. And then the discussions are more interesting sometimes than the answers. Uh, yesterday we've been talking all the time about this idea, what is more real, just filming it or directing it. And my, my concept is a little bit that the only reality that we need to have is the reality while you watch a film at the perception and uh, that the filming during the reality is very is d'office very very artificial you're standing there with a the camera with a crew um, it is an artificial situation now it's the it's the metier of the director to make this reality fake reality disappear through the filming through the editing through the sound editing and so on so in the end we got a kind of a perception of what we think as a spectator is a form of reality so that's more these two things writing and directing reality that's what i did in the classes here in lusophonia thank you Rob. thank you <laughs>